Don't let your kids watch it! Welcome everyone to the Undercover Brony Reviews. The episode reviewed today will be... May the Best Pet Win. Written by Charlotte Fullerton. So I was talking to Snakeskin just before we started recording. And he was telling me how he likes this episode. May the and best I gotta win. ask you. You said... From Daring Don't. I, Snakeskin94, enjoyed a Rainbow Dash episode. And you like this one, too? No, shut up. This isn't a Rainbow Dash episode. This is a... Because I was going to tell you this before we went on, but you interrupted me because you're just like, oh, look at me, Packers fan. I've got to break the Raiders' defense. So, like... So, like, listen... I was going to tell you, this episode is what kindled the Flutter Dash love for me. So you see, Jonathan, this is not a Rainbow Dash episode. This is a Flutter Dash episode. Suck my Magnum Dong and tell Aaron Rodgers that he wishes he had as much money to buy the rest as Tom Brady does. First of all, I ain't going to suck your Magnum Dong because that's disgusting. And number two, I definitely see where you're coming from. There's definitely a lot of good, cute little Flutter Dash moments here. Um, and I know we get to see some of them more throughout the series, but we'll see how it happens here. So let's get this review started. Flutter, Shy, Fl- Flutter Dash died a, died a death, dude. Yeah, it wasn't it fair. The, the I hints, still I mean- have to say... Applejack and Rainbow Dash are fucking roomies, okay? They are not together, you motherfuckers. I'm telling you this right now. It's really weird because I legit like Fluttercore. But, man, if I'm being honest, if I'm being honest, Flutter Dash didn't really get shit after tags for the memories. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, uh, okay. So, this may the best starts pet- off with a dream sequence. Yes, this and, is this is extremely quirky. Yeah, and so it's basically Rainbow Dash flying through the clouds, and she sees Owlicious, and she's like, "Okay, we're gonna race." And I love the sound effects that they make, you know, because it sounds like Formula One race cars and whatnot. I just, I, I've always been a big fan of like car exhaust notes, so I'm just like in love with the sound effects here. Um, the Foley artist needed to get paid a, a thick wad of cash for this shit. But <laughs> so then Owlicious decides to morph in Rainbow Dash's unconscious with the head of Winona and Gummy's like legs. And then Winona, the, the weird amalgamation monster opens its mouth to have uh, um opalescence come out and try and swipe at her so she freaks out she she wakes up and you realize she's napping in a tree when right below her is the rest of the main six they do what they call a pony pet play date and i love this concept because i have definitely seen this with uh, a bunch of f- friends and family before that they, you know, take their their pets out to go and, and play. Rainbow Dash is like, you know what? I get you. I don't have a pad. It doesn't matter. And she tries going back to sleep, but it fails majestically. And she's like, okay, hold on. Just because I don't have a pet now doesn't mean that I don't want a pet eventually. Just because I've and never played Dark set Souls off. doesn't mean I'm never going to. And Fluttershy's reaction is glorious. It's the best. It's actually the best. Tell them what happened because it's the best. She's like, oh my goodness, you want a, you want a pet? Oh, oh, I got so many pets in my house. We're going to go see them and blah, blah, blah. And you see like her just going nuts and everything. And then it, the camera zooms out. To where she's just dragging Rainbow Dash's back hooves on the ground. <laughs> and I'm not sure how the physics for that worked, but I'm really glad it did. And it transitions into the song. 
which can I it, correct me if I'm wrong? This is set to the tune of Flight of the Valkyries, yeah. That's later in the episode. That is later in the episode. Okay, never mind. Just because the cadence of the song I thought was like based on another song, but yeah, this is um, this is a very cute song. Now you may be thinking to yourself, but Snake Skin, you 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 thick neck bearded mad lad. All the songs in the show are cute. Au contraire, homie. You see, th- not only is this song cute, it's. I think it's underappreciated. I'm not saying it's fantastic, but I, I actually re looked up the song like 18 hours ago about mm-hmm. because I was just like, hmm, I haven't heard the song in years. And I'm like, damn. This is nice. It's just it's just put together really well. It's it, it does everything a song's supposed to. You know, it um it moves the plot forward while while expositing. Is that the word? Mm. And yeah, I just love it. And plus, yeah, um, Rainbow, my dear, mm, that hit me back in the mm. day. This song, what I love about it is the fact that it has different sections of the song that sound different from one another. Like the first of all is very light and airy. And then near the end, it gets a lot more triumphant. I I also like songs that have a mixture between talking and singing, because this definitely had that, you know, the music would be playing, they would be singing. And then there are otters and seals with great appeal. And then Rainbow Dash says, otters and seals do not fly. The music temporarily cuts off and just has the background music when Fluttershy is explaining, maybe not, but I've seen this particular seal get 10 feet of air when he breaches the water. So, like, you have those kind of, that kind of song, and I really like that because it makes it so much more unique. So, eventually, you get to see the the beginnings of Tank here because it's like, yes, okay, better but cooler is what Rainbow Dash says, and then Tank pokes his head into his shell and comes out with a pair of, like, sunglasses. So I'm like, okay, that that's pretty funny. And she decides, you know what, we need to have this competition so that we can find out which of these pets fits me the best. And so she does all these different things, and she's like, you're going to be judged on um, coolness, awesomeness, and radicalness. And then Twilight's like, um, aren't those the same thing? And Rainbow Dash is just like, okay, no, they're all different things. And that is why you would never qualify to be my pet. It just taps Twilight on the head. <laughs> it's just too funny. So do you want to you wanna take the reins for the next section? Uh, yes, absolutely. So after after uh, Twilight has been denied the opportunity to be Rainbow Dash's sub, which, by the way, I, maybe I'll tell you guys my headcanon one day about how I think Rainbow Dash is actually super-duper mega sub. But anyway, so after that, um, it's race time, everybody, because Rainbow Dash is talking to the pets as if they can understand them, which actually, I don't know why I said that because I think it's confirmed the animals do understand the ponies. We just don't. I, hey, wait a minute. You know what? What happened to those talking cows? I know, right? You get to hear Remember episode them three? Bit. No, we, you get to hear them a little bit, but they, they, they sadly went out the series pretty quick because they have like that, that uh, Midwest, the, the Minnesotan accent. Oh, yeah, don't you know? Oh gosh, don't you know? Hey, John, don't you don't you hate living in Wisconsin? But people thinking that everyone in that general area talks like that. Yeah, because here's the thing: I live right next door to Minnesota, and I don't even talk like that. So you know <laughs> what? That's a harmful stereotype. You, it's sensitive bigots. Hey, listen, listen, okay? You guys are next, okay? Everyone's still trying to figure out the different dialects between all the southern states. We'll get to the Midwest at some point. People people, people are still trying to decode California. California is still trying to decode California. Well, let's, let's hope that the, the whole accent thing gets to us before killer bees do. Oh, because God. I'm sorry. I hear those things are terrifying. So Dash, Dash's idea is... Um, 
Dash's idea is to put the animals through a test, and a bunch of tests. Um, after Fluttershy puts Tank the tortoise on the starting line, she's like, bro. Rainbow Dash is like, bro. And Rainbow Dash is like, bro. So the idea is Rainbow Dash is going to test speed, agility, gut style, coolness, awesomeness, and radicalness. What is it, 95? So, so God, Rocket Power would have a field day with her. So despite the fact that Tank gets absolutely murked in all these challenges, he still wants to compete because he still wants to be Rainbow Dash's pet. And she's like, and she's like, bro, listen, I respect your, I respect your gumption, which I don't know what that means. That's one of those words that you say and like, you know what it means. But when someone asks you to describe it, you're just like, what? So she narrows her choices down to an owl, which wouldn't make sense because Twilight has an owl, a falcon, which doesn't make sense because falcons are lame, an eagle, which wouldn't make sense because eagles belong to America, and a bat, which wouldn't make sense because all bats are property of Bruce Wayne. Well, I got to say, you were talking about how hawks are bad. I'm just thinking of that one Gabriel Iglesias clip where he goes to India and that Indian prince wants to give him a falcon that costs like a hundred thousand dollars because it's a very uh, I remember that skit a hundred thousand dollar falcon. They're yeah. vehicles. That's more money than you and I both make in a year at the same time. Yep. And speaking of pets, my cat's mowing in the background. So if you hear that, that that's what's going on. He's a Siamese, so uh he mouths a lot. A very talkative little cat. And screw the Middle East. <laughs> because they have too much money. While the people in charge do. So after um, that all settles down, the four flyers uh, and Tank, because he just won't give in, mm-hmm. they're going to race through a hazard-filled ghastly gorge. Which, can I point out, was, was Fluttershy okay with the fact that Rainbow Dash was half hazing, half attempting murder on these animals. I have no so, idea. She, but she I do got to say, she, one of my favorite things from this episode is near the beginning of the of the the, the montage, there's a um there's a section where she's like judging the animals based on what sounds they make. Oh and yeah. I'm like that's pretty cool. Um you get to see, you know, the the, the, the classic duck that that uh, that quacks there, which I gotta say, it's reminding me of that uh, the duck is singing like opera, good old school pony memes. But there's also like a butterfly that's just that just opens its mouth and nothing comes out, and there is a section where the bat makes a noise. And as it's switching to the next pet, the animation glitches. You get to see the bat's eyes close and the mouth open instantaneously as it's going to the next pet, which I thought was interesting. And then one of my other favorite parts before Ghastly Gorge is when, like, they're doing, like, a talent show thing. So they have, like, the bald ego eagle um, – well, at this point, bald eagle and bald ego are pretty much one and the same when it comes to America. But yeah. the bald eagle is knitting a sweater for Rainbow Dash. And, like, there's a section where her and the owl are literally posing next to each other in almost like a class yearbook sort of style with the, the sweaters and everything. I just thought that was really cute. But guess the Gorge. Oh, boy. Yes. She's like, you're going to race against me in Ghastly Gores. Da, da, da. Then you hear the, the the falcon make its noise, and, and she's like, gazunte. <laughs> but they're going through, and you get to see the different strengths and weaknesses of all of them. The bat is able to go through the, the, the prickly vines really easily because it has sonar and whatnot. It... It's basically like you cross the finish line with me, you get to be my pet. That this is the last one. They're getting past these moray eels, which we find out later 
in the series that Maude was going to be eaten by one of them. Maude Pie was going to be eaten by one of these creatures. Yeah. That's crazy. But I don't know if they did that on per. I don't, well, obviously, not like they foreshadowed it, but I, I wonder if they're just like, oh man, we need something to try to kill Mod Pie. Remember that shit back in season two? There we go. That's the kind. That's the kind of callback continuity that people love us for. It's near the end, and there's a huge avalanche that happens. Rainbow Dash gets her wing caught underneath a rock, and she's not able to get out. And she's like. I can't see you forever. That's like forever. So Rainbow Dash gets trapped hella and out of the shadows comes Tank and she's like, oh, great. I'm dead. But then he levers the boulder up with his head because Mm -hmm. tortoises can actually do that shit, right? I have no idea. But I got to say, one little thing here that I love you know how back in Tanks of the Memories when I was talking about how I feel like this was five seasons of build-up coming out? This is the first part that I thought of because she does this really long sigh and she scrunches her eyes shut real tight and she's about to cry right then and there. She's about to burst into tears because she's like, how the hell am I going to get out of this situation? Yes. My one strength, flight, is completely gone. All the pets come through, and I, and I love how as as each of them are coming past the finish line, you know, the, the, the rest of the main six are just like, ooh, ah, and then by the end they're just like, eh, you know, whatever. <laughs> they see that there was an avalanche, and then they also see that Dash is riding on tank. She decides to have Tank as her pet because she's stuck to her rule. Her rule being the fact that the animal needed to cross the finish line with me. And the only one that did was the tortoise. And I got to say, this kind of moral, I think, is great because you need to see the potential in everyone because you may be looking at something, could be superficial, could be deep, but could also be superficial. And then you realize there's someone else just behind them that actually has what you're looking for, but you're too blinded at that time to see it until you see that other person show you what you've been looking for. And I really like that kind of moral. It's like, it's like you go in the fridge, right? And you're like, God damn it. There's only, there's only, there's only, there's only yogurt. Oh no, you're just like, I want yogurt. But then you look to your right and then you see the applesauce and you're like, you know what? I haven't had applesauce in a long time. So you take the applesauce, you take a spoonful, you know, because you're just like, it's applesauce. It's whatever. But then you eat the applesauce and you're like, bro, applesauce is fucking rad. So you see, sometimes, you see, John, sometimes in life, you want to go to point, you want to go from point A to point B. But sometimes it's okay. It's okay to go from point A to point C. So I come up with a sociological analogy and you come up with a food analogy great job john, everyone john john deep philosophical meanings snakeskin la mayo applesauce <laughs> exactly so that was the episode overall pretty good yeah yeah great. i liked it it wasn't, I mean, in retrospect, it wasn't like amazing, perfectly fantastic, but I still liked it. Mm-hmm. What would you score it? I get a 7.25. This was, this still had some fun moments. Wasn't the greatest. It's kind of middle of the road for me, but it's still a little bit better than the average episode. Yeah, I was actually going to, you know, it's funny you said 2.5. I was going to give it 7.75 just because, you know, it's it's better than average, but it's not, like, exceedingly better than average. You know what I mean? It's, like, mm-hmm. 
it, it, it like uh, like it is a good episode, but you know, it's um, I don't want to say it's not it's not that it's not good. It's good, not great, because I feel like that kind of undervalues it. But yeah, let's just go with that. It's good, but it's not great. Exactly. Yes. No. So next time, wait. It's no. finally happening. No. No. Oh God. Oh God. Is it Meriduel? Yes, it is Meriduel. Oh, we going in deep, boys. Oh we yeah. We're going in deep. We're going in elbow deep. Uh, yes. We're gonna do a deep dive. Are we gonna rip it to shreds? Or are we going to think and eh, it wasn't too bad? Find out next time on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. Check out Super Mario Bros. Z by Alvin Earthworm. It is so good. Oh, dude, that's old school. Yeah. New Grounds old school, my dude. So, yeah, uh, married well. Bye. It's going to be fun. So, we will see you guys later. Peace out, Dragon. Adios. It's going to be fucking something, all right.